This is part 65 of AngularCRAD tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to call a server-side service using the Angular's new HTTP client service. We'll specifically discuss issuing a GET request to retrieve data from the server over HTTP. Now, when we navigate to the list route, we've got three employees, Mark, Mary and John. At the moment, these three employees are hard-coded within our client-side Angular service employee service. So if we take a look at the project that we've been working with, notice here we've got our employee service and within the service all the three employee objects that we see on the list route are coming from this list employees array. In a real world application we would be retrieving this data from a server by calling a server side service. Now in part 63 of this video series we created a fake restful service using the JSON server at the moment, our service is stopped, so let's start it using the Visual Studio Code integrated terminal. The command that we use to start the server is this json-server dash dash watch and the file that we want to watch is db.json. There we go. Our service is up and running at localhost colon 3000. Now to see the list of employees, let's navigate to this URI, localhost colon 3000 employees. Notice here we have the list of employees coming from our RESTful service. At the moment, this data is in JSON format. Now what we want to do is issue a GET request to this URI, retrieve this JSON data and then display it on this page right here. Now, to communicate with a server-side RESTful service, we're going to make use of the Angular's new HTTP client service. Before we can use this service, we need to import HTTP client module in our application. In most Angular applications, we do this in the root app module, which is present in this file, app.module.ts. So let's include the required import statement. What we want to import is HTTP client module. So this HTTP client module is present in Angular common HTTP package. Now to complete the import, we also have to include this HTTP client module in the import array of at ng module decorator. Next, we need to import the Angular HTTP client service that's present in this HTTP client module. We need the HTTP client service in our Angular employee service. So in this employee.service.ts file, let's import HTTP client service. Again, this HTTP client service is coming from Angular common HTTP. Now let's include a constructor within our employee service class and inject the HTTP client service. I'm going to call the private field HTTP client and this is of type HTTP client that we have just imported. Now let's use this private field to issue a GET request to our RESTful service. Now if we take a look at GET employees method, notice at the moment this method is returning the list of employees that we have in this private array list employees. We don't want to do that anymore. We want to issue a GET request to our RESTful service. So let's delete this code and use the private field HTTP client and issue a GET request. To issue a GET request, we're going to use the GET method of HTTP client service and we want to issue a GET request to this URI localhost colon 3000 employees. Notice here we are using the get method to issue a get request. In addition to get, notice from the IntelliSense we also have post, put, patch and delete to perform the respective HTTP operations. In our upcoming videos, we'll discuss performing post, put, patch and delete. Now if I hover the mouse over this get method, Notice from the IntelliSense, the return type of this method is observable of object. But we know this RESTful service is going to return us an array of employee objects. So I'm going to use the generic parameter 
of this get method and typecast the return type to employee array. There are several overloaded versions of this get method. So if we right click on this and go to the definition, notice we have one version which supports generics. So we are using this overloaded version to specify the type of data that we are expecting. In this case, we are expecting an employee array. Now, if we were using the old HTTP service, we would have to use .json method on the response that this get method returns to convert the format of data to JSON. With this new HTTP client service, we no longer have to do it because with this new service, the default response format is JSON. Notice we still have a red squiggly here. That's because we are not returning the data. So let's use the return keyword and return data. Finally, to be able to call this get employees method, we need to subscribe to its observable. If we do not subscribe, this method will not be called. Now, let's see where this method is being used by finding all the references to it. So right click on the method and select this option, find all references. As you can see, one reference is within this file employee.service.ts, which is this method itself right here. And the other reference is in this file employee list resolver file. So if we go to the definition, notice here we're calling the get employees method of our employee service and that's happening with an employee list resolver service. And if you take a look at where we are using this resolver service, we are using it in our root application module on this list route right here. So this resolver service is retrieving the data required for this list route. So within the employee list resolver service, notice we are not explicitly subscribing to the observable returned by this get employees method by using the subscribe method. So the obvious question that comes to our mind is, how is this method being called in spite of us not subscribing to its observable explicitly? Well, if the observable service is being consumed by a resolver, like in this case, then the resolver will subscribe to the observable. We do not have to explicitly subscribe. The resolver service will automatically subscribe to the observable for us. That's the reason we don't have an explicit call to the subscribe method. On the other hand, if this observable service is being consumed by another component or service directly, then that component or service should subscribe to the observable using the subscribe method. Otherwise, the service method will not be called. Now, the list of employees that we see here are coming from our RESTful service. To prove this, let's change the name of this employee from Mark to Nick. So within db.json file within our project, let's change the name of this employee to Nick, save our changes, and let's reload this page. Notice the name of the employee now is Nick. At the moment, we are not handling errors when we are calling the server-side RESTful service. What if this GET request fails on the server? Or even worse, if a poor network connection prevents this request from even reaching the server? In this case, the HTTP client service is going to return an error response instead of a successful response. In our next video, we'll discuss error handling. So, three simple steps to use the new HTTP client service to issue calls to the server-side RESTful services. First, import the Angular HTTP client module. We typically do this in the root application module, app module. Next, inject and use the HTTP client service in the component R service where you need it. In our case, we need it in employee service. Finally, subscribe to the observable. Otherwise, the service method will not be called. One exception to this is if the observable service is being consumed by a resolver, then the resolver service will subscribe to the observable automatically. We do not have to explicitly subscribe by using the subscribe method. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.